Hello and welcome back to another Fantasy Premier League video for the 2020-2021 season. I'm your host Chris from the FPL Dude and here with us today we have a very special guest for the first time in our show and it's FPL Sonaldo. Hello FPL Sonaldo. Hey. Well, uh, how are you and how have you been doing? Could you please tell us something about yourself, about your football background or about your FPL background? Um, yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on, FPL Dude, and no you know my friend Chris. Uh, I really appreciate you allowing me to speak on this platform. Um, apologize no to the audience. Apologize to the audience for uh, this is my first time as well, so I might mm. you know stutter a little bit. So <laughs> I, pre I hope you guys can understand. Um, yeah, it's, the, it's kind of the same here. I'm a bit nervous too. It's the first yeah. time I actually do a talk show like this. So talk show, yeah. Yep. I hope yep. the audience is not too harsh on us today. Yeah, not too harsh. First yeah. Time. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. yeah, to introduce myself, uh, you know, I've been a lifelong football fan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously in South Korea uh, right now, the Son Heung Min era is heavily upon our mm -hmm. nation. So uh, I think everybody out here is tuned into, um, you know, for the Premier League, but. I think FPL in Korea has not become as big yet, so I'm hoping to become one of the, uh, I guess, leaders of mm -hmm. FPL in, mm -hmm. in Korea. Sure. Um, so for me, I got into the Premier League due to Thierry Henry and the Invinci Invincibles at the time, and then uh, yes. the whole Jason Park era was a huge influence on my mm -hmm. footballing, I guess, uh, you know, yeah, on, yeah. on my football Football right? career. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, ever since then, I, do, I don't really have a club just because I'm an international person, um, mm -hmm. but I do follow a lot of my favorite players and kind of go where, where they go. And in terms of right. FPL, I've been playing for a couple of years now, but I would say this is my very first serious season. And mm -hmm. Uh, the way I, I like to play, I think I view FPL as a marathon. So I th think um, when you have sure, 38 yeah. game weeks, you don't have to always take punts. You don't have to always, um, you know, be so risky. So I think that it, over the course of a marathon, it's important to pick out and pick and choose kind of when you want to be defensive mm -hmm. and attacking in terms of uh, fixtures. Um, so this season, I've used a lot of uh, statistical analysis, kind of, you know, things like XG, big chances, you know, um, fixture versus form, all of that. So I've been having a great season, actually. Yeah. Mm, nice to hear that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, how did you manage to get to the top 25,000? I mean, did the season start good or you managed to climb up the rankings and uh, mm -hmm. get to where you are today? I think if I remember the very first week, was it Salah? I think Salah had a had a big mm -hmm. first open game week. So, um, you know, this this year I've listened to a lot of the top, I guess, FPL experts out there, and yeah, you know, yeah. a lot of them seem to agree that the the beginning of the season is very important because in the beginning you don't want to fall too far behind. So. Mm -hmm. I, I had a great start, I would say. Not not the best start, but a decent start. And mm. um, I think the way I got to 25K at this point is the last seven game weeks, I've had green arrows. Okay. So all of seven them. game weeks ago. Yeah, all of them, actually. Nice, so, nice, nice. So it's been a good run, I guess, the past two months. Yeah. Is month. there any special technique that you change now a strategy <laughs> for the last seven games, perhaps? Or you've been playing the same strategy, but it seemed to work out now? in the last few games you know no no particular strategy i think uh, the most important thing is captain picks i you mm -hmm. know 100% committed to safe captain picks um i try safe not to picks. sway away too much because i think part of attacking and defending weeks is mm -hmm. to play the ownership right because yeah. we can yeah. never really predict points and we can never really chase points but mm -hmm. i think it's it's good to defend against falling in rankings by, you know, picking guys who have high ownership and then picking the differentials from there. True. So that's how I've kind of been approaching it. I've also gotten very lucky. Um, mm. You know, that's part of that's mostly part of the game. That's part of the job, yeah. <laughs> part of the job, of course. And I've also got unlucky because, for example, last week I feel like Antonio could have had. 
uh, mm. easily at point pointer, right? So yeah, that's fun. Yeah, he did good. <laughs> he did good at. Yeah. So that was pretty good. Yeah. So now, as for the next part, we're going to go through our teams for Game Week 21 and um, how we believe they will do now in Game Week 21. I'll start by commenting on my defenders. I believe that I'm not that strong going forward into Game Week 21 with this defense. I believe that Dallas could potentially lose his clean sheet potential now in Game Week 21 because Leicester are very good attacking minded mm -hmm. football when playing at home. And as for Target and Martinez, that there is a big question mark there. I mean, they allowed five goals in the last two games. So mm -hmm. if they're not going to be able, if they're now going to be able to keep it clean against Southampton, I believe that they're going to be good points there. But um, I'm afraid the Target is not that creative player, and I'm not awaiting so much attacking FPL return potential in game week 21. As for Cancelo, he's not even going to start now. So. <laughs> Terrible yeah. pick for game with 21. Yeah. What do you think on your defense? Uh, so, um, to comment on yours, actually, mm. I do have Cancelo as well and yeah. Stone, who are both benched this week, which is happening that's right tough. in front of our eyes right mm. now. Uh, tough luck. So that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do think uh, I do think that. Aston Villa double up is very risky there, my friend. Martinez and Target. It is. It is. Um, so <coughs> I think I would. Sorry. For your team, maybe my suggestion would be to move to a double Man City defense, just because I feel like, regardless of their mm. fixture, they're so good right now. And, um, and been... anything I would recommend, Diaz Dias, Dias, however mm -hmm, you pronounce it. Mm -hmm. Um, for my team, I do have Robertson, Cancelo, and Stones. I do love Cancelo and Stones, and I will keep them. Um, I wish I had Martinez. I would love to have the Aston Villa keeper. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to take a minus four hit to bring him in. No way. Uh, Get it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how I feel about Ro uh, Robertson. You know, I love Robert Robo. I think he's a great player. I um, believe he would I, do good. I believe he'll do good now in game 21 against West Ham, especially. Yeah, yeah. So over the, you know, we're looking at kind of 21 to 25, and I don't know when I'm going to use my second wild card, but I think uh, I think I might move Robertson down to possibly a Chilwell. Uh, I'm Chilwell. not sure yet. Uh, Chilwell seemed great, yeah. Uh, seemed great um, last game, very attacking. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Now, as for the midfielders, I chose to go mm -hmm. with Fernandes, Gundogan, Son and uh, Grealish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do believe that Grealish offers excellent attacking f return potential now against Southampton. Mm -hmm. um, Son as well. I mean, now mm -hmm. Kane is gone, so I do believe that Son needs to make that step up. f yep. Ronaldo, what do you think about Son? He should do good now, right? Yeah, so... Uh... You know, obviously, if you can't tell by my Twitter handle, I am mm. the biggest Son and Min fan. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have countless jerseys. <laughs> and I did start watching Son since his uh, Bayern Leverkusen days. Mm -hmm, and I never mm -hmm. really thought he would be this good. But, you know, now I think it's undisputed that he's a world-class player. True. Um, One of so the best very in the world. Easy. Yeah, yeah. And as a Korean, you know, we don't have many world-class players, so mm. if any, so this is a this is a great moment in our footballing history, I think. Right. Yeah. So I have one just question. Uh -huh. It might be a bit off topic. It's not yeah, FPL yeah. related, but it's still football related. I'm just interested to know, like, do people uh -huh. watch more football in Korea now after Son uh -huh. got famous, or uh -huh. is it the same? I think absolutely, Son has had a huge influence on. Mm. Uh, maybe not, maybe not football fans like myself who always watched um, Premier League, but a lot of like casual fans and you know moms and, and you know dads, grandfathers, little kids. You know the whole nation is glued to um, Spurs games a lot of the times. So it's, it's nice. had a huge influence. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to hear it's, that uh, Son can have such a huge impact on yep. the whole yep. culture. Yeah, huge cultural uh, influence, mm -hmm. and um, you know, to get to the point, I think uh, why 
Son would be one of my uh, midfielder picks coming up mm -hmm. for the next mm -hmm. game week. Is um, if you look into the last four game weeks, um, Son's expected points here I have is has been about seven two point seven point two points over the last four mm -hmm. game weeks, mm -hmm. which is I think one of the highest, the third highest uh, midfielders behind Mane and De Bruyne, KDB. So yeah, that seems true. Um, and then you know more and more. If you look more into it, um, let's say Son with Kane and without Kane, the last three years, um, his XG, for example, has been 0 0.4 to 0 0.35. Mm -hmm. His XA has been 0 0.11 to 0 0.22. But his expected involvement, involvement per 90 minutes has been 0 0.51 to 0 0.57. So basically, there isn't much of a difference whether mm. uh is playing with or without Kane um and you know over the last three or four seasons there's been about six stretches where Son and Kane haven't been playing together mm -hmm. and the most uh memorable stretch I don't know if you remember Chris is when um Spurs made their run to the Champions League final mm -hmm. and when they did actually Kane wasn't part of that journey for mm -hmm. that, I think he was injured during that time. So during that time, Son really did carry Spurs. Maybe I'm, be I'm being very biased, but I do remember him being. Uh -huh. Do you believe that he will be able to carry his team now when Kane is injured as well this year? So that is the the you know the main question of you know what do we do with Son right now because yeah. he didn't look that great um, in that second half versus Liverpool. They looked really bad actually. He looked lost and, in the second um, half. Exactly, they looked awful. And mm. so let's, if, if you look into the stats again, so last season, Son without Kane and Son with Kane, um, mm. I'm reading this off my computer, is uh, minutes inside the box, he's he is 25 versus 50 minutes uh, mm. without Kane. Mm. So he's actually having more chances um, in less minutes than with Kane. Um, so I think I'll be watching the Brighton game really carefully and I think he won't get a lot of goals. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll get one or two, but I think he's Let's a fixture-proof yeah, fixture proof, um, kind of player and has a lot of possibility to do really good. Even against like, I think his fixtures are what, Liverpool, Man City, or mm. yeah, he's got some tough fixtures coming up. Let me they're see tricky fixtures, yes. They're not the toughest, they're not the easiest, but... Yeah, so it looks like they have Chelsea game week 22 and Man City game week 24 mm -hmm. and then, you know, West Brom, West Ham. But, you know, people might be scared off that Man City-Chelsea game, but mm. I think Son is one of those players that actually perform even better against better teams, right? So I do believe that as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Son mm -hmm. is that counter-attacking football that usually mm -hmm. do good against those high defensive flies that exactly. teams have. Yep. Liverpool, mm -hmm. in yeah. this case. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I think Son is a good shout for me. And I do really like the Grealish shout that you just mentioned. Um, so, yeah. So, I, I, I don't want to... Uh, go ahead. I see that you do not own uh, Grealish in your team. Do you have any transfer plans perhaps to bring him in soon? Or what are your plans on Grealish? Yeah, so I don't have Grealish. I would need to take uh, minus or mm. to bring him in probably because I would love to switch who do I have I would love to switch Rafinha straight to mm. Grealish but I don't think I have enough funds um True. I think that Grealish you know is one of the top top players this season and possibly mm. the best midfielder in the game right now in current form right Aston Villa have looked really really good um you know I think fixtures don't really matter for Aston Villa right now. And if I look, if I dive into the stats, this is another really mm. cool stat. Um, this season, Grealish has, has has already had six goals, ten assists, and the most shocking stat is that he's had 136 mm. touches in the box already. That so is those really stats, yeah, yeah, those stats are very equivalent to uh, his stats from last season, but in mm. half the games, right? So. You know, it just goes to show his improvement this season. Um, he's getting way more touches in the final third, way more big chances created. Um, it, the downfall of Grealish is it's not as cr clinical as like Son. Son's uh, mm -hmm. finishing rate is, you know, lethal, right? As mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. must know. But 
I think with the return of Barkley, it frees up Grealish to go a little, you know, more to the side. And I think that's where he's best at. So Yeah, he, he can create a bit more from mm -hmm. that side. He can side, yep. free up more mm -hmm. space and mm -hmm. be more dangerous, yes. Mm -hmm. So I like Grealish. I think he's a good shout. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, nice I do want to mention Zaha as well, maybe. Um, I think Zaha, mm -hmm. his fixtures are just so good. You yeah, know? Um, I do believe Zaha is a very good player for the next few upcoming mm -hmm. games as well. Mm -hmm. And exactly. he's one of yeah. the reasons I even chose him for those best predicted players yeah. for game yeah. with 20 to the game with 25. Mm -hmm. Um, and now as for the next player, I have Gundogan as captain against Sheffield United. I can see that you have him as well. Yep. I mean, do you really believe that Gundogan now has bigger chance to score in game 21 than Son? I mean, I was stuck to choose between these two guys. I really wanted to go Son. It was kind of last second decision to go for Gundogan. And it just happened. So what are your thoughts on this? Why did you go for Gundogan and not for Son in game with 21? I mean, that is a fantastic question and I am already regretting it. Um, oh, because sure. we are actually speaking as this Man City game is happening. Mm. <laughs> and uh, it looks like Gundogan has not produced anything in the first half. And I, I, the reason I picked Gundogan is because I think the majority of the top 10k owners have Gundogan as captain. So I just... Mm kind of played a very defensive captain game this week but I had Son until the last five minutes and this is what mm, happens in FPL when you go with your gut feeling and then you decide last minute to change yeah. you know all the time you make, like you yeah. make statistical analysis you yeah. look at those features you look at all the players the form then mm -hmm. you have very strong opinion on one player mm -hmm. then five minutes before the deadline you something else <laughs> just kicks in and you decide to go yeah. with someone yeah. else <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that just everyday yeah. Yeah. thing happening. Yeah. <laughs> but as, as a Son fan, I, you know, if he holds, if he Sorry. does well, like, I won't even get mad, you know. Mm. <laughs> um, and um, as for the strikers now, I chose yeah, to Yeah, I go... do want to mention one more um, before we, we move on. Um, yeah. Sorry to cut you off, but... No, no, no. Uh, sure. one, one move I'm... I'm kind of thinking about is uh, this may be a sideways move, so I don't know if it's the best idea, but I do really like the money shout right now. And I would be very, very interested in moving Salah on for money because I don't think mm -hmm. Salah has looked that great recently. Um, and if you look carefully, Mane in terms of statistics is the, uh, let's see is the has the number one expected points over the last four games at 29.8 mm. right so he's producing about 7.5 points per game even though he's just scored only in the last game um mm. which is the highest for anybody right yeah. and uh this could be a this could be a good sign and good opportunity to jump on money right because the only downfall is Salah will always have those penalties and sometimes fpl is just just that, that way where the penalties beat the XG, but um, the penalties have slowed down, right, in general, yeah, right, in terms of the later. entire league, yeah. And uh, if you look carefully, Mane has had more chances and more big chances in the big chance zone than Salah. Hmm. And uh, just on the eye test, if you look at Robertson, he's been moving more up and Trent has played more deeper. So I think what, that hap what happens is that allows Mane to kind of move more central, right? And so when you look at the way Liverpool's attacking and they're going forward, Salah just only occupies the right um, final third, whereas Mane is kind of occupying the middle and the left, right? So he's got more room to attack, more opportunities with balls coming in behind. And uh, just on the eye test, I mean, he looks really, really good, right? So Yeah, I mean, I've... Uh, I've mm -hmm. analyzed some statistics as well now for the last okay, yeah. even couple of seasons and I've noticed that when yeah. Salah's form drops down, Mane's form increases. I mean, it happened last yeah, year, it happened 2018-19. Yeah. So it is happening mm -hmm. all the time that Mane plays better when Salah plays. Whereas, I mean, all the, the whole team perhaps relate much more mm -hmm. on Mane right now. So yeah, I do believe mm -hmm. as well yeah. that Mane should potentially be a better option yeah. than Salah, but... 
Is it worth taking using a free transfer to change Salah to Mane right now? Do you believe that would be a smart and good idea to do? <sighs> That's a great question. I, I did say it was a, it looks like a sideways move. It could go hmm. who knows how it could go because of the penalties. But if it wasn't for the penalties, I would do it in a heartbeat because I think he sure, needed, yeah. I'm I'm not too scared of Salah right now. You know, and I do have the wild card in my back pocket, so um you know i i am but with that being said sala is the king of fpl right so true, 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 um, true, true, true. they can always punish you so it's one of those things that i'm just thinking about yeah yeah i'm always afraid to not own sala right now i'm glad like that he's down in form and he's not doing this so good because i'm not a sala owner but i'm always yeah. afraid that he might come back and start doing good as he did now in the beginning of the season where he actually exactly. scored in almost every played game he had yeah yeah um so um, yeah enough being said now about the defense and the midfielders i believe it's time to talk a bit about our strikers now in game 21 i okay. chose to go with bamford calvert lewin mm. and wilson i gotta say that i was pretty lucky on this one because <laughs> <laughs> my transfer that i was planning to do for game week 21 was actually wilson to dcl but oh, no. I was kind of <laughs> lucky here because Kane got injured, so I got to change Kane <laughs> to DCL instead, and Wilson got two goals for me, game week 21. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. I Thank you. Thank you. It was yeah. lucky and uh, good <laughs> I guess. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think now, the, the Wilson paid off very good. <laughs> yeah, 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 very, very much. I mean, um, now as for like Wilson, he gives me a headache. I don't know if I want to sell him right now. I mean, yeah, yeah, he has yeah, pretty good yeah. fixtures. They're not that terrible, but I just wanted to transfer him yeah. out because of his terrible team form. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you, you now you officially have a headache because mm, Newcastle. Really let's be honest. I'm sorry to all the Newcastle fans out there. They're just not not a team I like to watch, or not a you know team that I think is very good but mm. if they scored Wilson is almost guaranteed to be part of it right like whether it's the goal yeah. or the assist he's always going to be involved so he's never a bad shout for his price point um I did not expect him to score two against Everton no. and like you I had I brought in DCL for <coughs> minus four points only to get a blank this week no worries so mm. Well, that sucks, but uh, <laughs> is it? And your video is breaking down. Is it good now? Yeah, you're good. Good, I good. see you. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. I'm so what are you gonna do? Are you gonna keep Wilson, or are you gonna I'm pretty, sell him? I'm pretty sure that I'm going to keep Wilson after this game. Are you really nice? Uh -huh. I don't think this is a, a knee-jerk reaction. Because I okay. do believe that I have a bit of other problems and troubles in my team as far as mm. like Dallas, Bamford, what do I do with them, yep. Kufal yep. as well, yep. I mean West Ham have had good defense throughout mm. the whole season but now in the last couple of games they allow a lot of goals mm. and they seem not to keep it clean anymore. Yep. And Kufal yep. is not their main attacking uh, defender. Yep. I mean, Cresswell is their most creative. So if I was going to have Cresswell, perhaps I was going to keep him. But Kufal is somebody that I'm looking to transfer out now gotcha. in the next couple of games. And I believe that Chilwell should be a good replacement for... Yeah, I really like the Chilwell. Yeah. What do you plan to do now for game week 21 to plus? I mean... What are your transfer plans or um, what are you looking just, to improve? Yeah, I just wanted to give you a little more information on Chilwell, why, why I think he could be a sneaky mm -hmm. good pick. Um, and the one I'm looking at as well. So it, it seems like we're both targeting Chilwell, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so um, forgive me for my pronunciation, but there's always the new manager, right, bounce back. <laughs> And yeah, uh, yeah. to tell, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. Tokel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, let's say to chill. Sorry, guys. Chill. Um, <laughs> under Tuchel, to chill. <laughs> I don't know. He, but I, he had, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was uh, <laughs> extremely attacking. Um, 
So some statistics I can give you is he recorded 38 touches in the final third, which is, I think, the most out of any defender in that game week 20. Um, they also, Chelsea, only had one shot in the box on against mm, them. They so were very good defensively. Uh, the very, very good there. defensively. Um, they did have a lot of side-to-side -side passing, so I'm not sure how um, important their possession status, but they had 78% uh, percent possession. So I think I, I'm going to do the Robo to Chelsea move after in game week 23 or something like that. So mm, you want to give a little time that. to adapt new to your new manager style, perhaps. Per perfectly said. And also, you know, Chelsea is a team we should watch out for because we don't really know who to pick, right? They're just their goals are spread out, you know, their defending is spread out. So mm. it's one of those teams where we just got to keep a close eye and kind of hop on the right time on the right player. Yeah. Now, when we uh, speak about Chelsea as well, do you believe that mm -hmm. Justin, perhaps, I mean, mm -hmm. James is going to get more starts now with Tuchel? Uh, James. Uh, I would hold off. I, I think. Yeah. Um, I think there's better defensive mm -hmm. options. I still believe in the city double up. Um, so, so without you know criticizing your team, my constructive like uh, advice might be to. I, th I really like your midfield and your attack. I think mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong Thank with you. your attack. Yeah, I really like your midfield. Um, I think the heavy hitters aren't performing, so I don't think Salah or having a Liverpool mid might hurt you that bad, especially mm. with their fixtures not being so great. I have great. around uh -huh. um, 10 million yeah. in the bank as well, which, I, really? which is excellent. <laughs> so I could potentially go for any Liverpool uh -huh. asset whenever I want. In How the many next game. transfers do you have? Uh, I have one free transfer now. One I don't have transfer. more than that because I did uh -huh. use... Um, I had two, but I had to use okay. them. Um, I, I think it was around the double game week or the blank game week. So I kind of used... Four transfer in two game weeks where I was actually needed I in a need to take a hit as well. I see. So I have not been able to keep one free transfer now since then. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I, I, uh, maybe I would go for a DS, maybe I'd bring in a chill mm. because I think the mid and attacking look really just totally fine. Maybe maybe I would look into Antonio. But mm, sure, that's yeah. About, yeah. Antonio, perhaps instead of Bamford mm. or instead of Wilson now. I don't know. Oh, so oh, cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you should give up on Bamford yet. You know, I think Leicester mm. is still, I mean, not Leicester, Leeds still, still a great team and still an opportunity for them to bounce back. Mm. There's arguments about them being fatigued, but they've played the same way for the last three years, um, even though I've never really watched them until this season. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Bamford is not someone you should sell instantly. But with that being said, um, mm, yeah, I think yeah. you agree with me that Antonio is a must-have right now. Um, he sure you know, is, Antonio, yeah. yeah. Um, to give you a little more stat, Antonio is kind of like in form. When he's in form, he's kind of like in form Messi, right? Mm, yeah, 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 I mean, he's yeah. very good for yeah. that price. He's, he's very, very good. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, over the last three game weeks, West Ham have looked really good. Um, you know, last week, I did burn 15 mm. points by leaving Suchek on the bench, but Ooh, no team same. has averaged better XG per game than West Ham. It's been really <laughs> <best. And coughs> Um, you know, I think I think the reason why this is happening is because of Antonio, right? Like, mm. you know, he could have easily had 20 points last game. You know, he he hit the post left post two times, I think. Um, he's top of the league in terms of shots per box and big chances and non penalty xG for an attacker. Mm. So last week, uh, in the last three game weeks, he's had eight shots inside the box, four big chances two big chances created and he's just a stat monster right mm, so true. so for me Antonio is a must have yeah. uh, there's one uh, thing that I would like to say about West Ham's defense that is yeah. because I've noticed statistically speaking that West Ham defense is worse when Antonio is playing Interesting. I believe wow, that they're, that. they're, they're uh -huh. attacking much more when uh, Antonio is playing they're trying to win that game so they do not keep so many clean yeah. sheets but when Antonio mm -hmm. is absent, they pretty much want to 
park the bus or get away with one point and perhaps just end the game with 0-0. So I do believe that now perhaps West Ham defenders are going to be targeted hard from mm -hmm. next game week onwards. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they will not be able to keep it as clean as they've done now for the last 10-20 games for the whole yeah, season. Yeah. So yeah. There yeah, is that's a great observation. Much. I like that. Um, who would you say would be your two top um, two defenders that you would like to recommend now for the next Oof. four game weeks? <laughs> Let's say game week 22 to game week 25. Like two yeah, defenders I mean, that will uh -huh. actually do really good and are going to end in the top five out of all defenders for the next four upcoming mm -hmm. games. Um, as I mentioned, um, I think the City double up is a must have um, personally. Mm -hmm. So either one, Cancelo, Diaz, and maybe John Stones, one of them. I, so I do, do have Cancelo and Stones right now. You do believe that they will continue to do good now, even with those upcoming fixtures? I mean, they do have yeah. pretty tricky upcoming fixtures. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think so, because um, I think uh, even though Cancelo has rotation, there's always rotation risk with Pep Roulette, yeah. right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. regardless of City's fixtures, um, sometimes you got to find the balance between fixtures versus form, right? Mm. And the form defensively have just been phenomenal, right? So, and City throughout history has shown that they can be quite good under tough games, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, mm. but, you know, they're actually really good against tougher teams. So I would not be surprised if they go out and I'm not sure what their fixtures are, but I think they have, what, some tough fixtures coming up. Let me see. Liverpool, you know, Tottenham, but... I think they could go out and do pretty well, and I'm sure they can get keep a clean sheet against Arsenal as well. So, yeah, so I, is, I do like that. Yeah, there is pretty um, much possible mm -hmm. to happen. But yeah. if if we are not going to choose only one city defender, which of them Ouch. do you like most? <laughs> For me, it have to be Diaz because I do believe that he yeah. is like their yeah. key defender. He yeah, likes to yeah. defend a lot. I mean, he starts in every game since he started yeah. getting yeah. starts Ooh. at the beginning of the season. He's mm -hmm. doing excellently. I mean, he perhaps he's not that attacking-minded centre-back, but he does offer us excellent clean sheet potential, especially now when he plays for such a defensive team like Manchester City. Yeah, I, I can't argue against it. And especially today, as we've seen, Dias is the only nailed on one, right? So he's undisputed, you know, starter, mm -hmm. right? True. Um, for me, I would still pick Cancelo over Dias just because I think his um, returns can be much higher. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he's basically a like a, a midfielder, right? And um, yeah, 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 he's it's so attacking. So, so, so it's a tough call. I think either one would be totally fine. Yeah, over True. the course of four or five game weeks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but the other actually uh, other midfield or other defenders I would pick is either Chilwell, which is probably my first move in game of twenty twenty three, mm. and then I would also give uh, Manu defender or Dahea um, a shout because their fixtures are so good. Um, so um, uh, Harry you, Maguire possibly. Mm -hmm. um, if we now compare between Harry Maguire and Juan Bissaka. I me mean, myself as well. I would like to have Maguire in my team because he has better yeah. potential for scoring goals. I mean, he's yeah, always actually, up yeah. there on yeah. corners and free kicks, so he could yeah. potentially get in some header goal. Or uh, yeah. he's a player that likes to take a lot of shots as well to push yeah. high up yeah. the pitch. Yeah, well, I hundred percent agree with you. Yeah, I I would pick Maguire over Juan Bissaka any day. Mm. If anything, I would look into Luke Shaw over. Harry Maguire, but I think I would still pick Harry Maguire because he's such a beast when it comes to yeah. uh, set pieces and his goal threat is pretty high, even though he's a center back. So yeah, true, true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he's that. very <coughs> he's pushing so high up the pitch all the time. Exactly. So yeah. I do believe they offer us like, he offers excellent potential for attacking yep. FPL return as yep. well as clean sheet potential Jeez. because yep. of those upcoming fixtures. Exactly. Um, yep. 
As for the midfielders, do you have any special or any individuals that you think will do good now in game with 22 to game with 25? I mean, two individuals uh, that perhaps uh, are separated from the rest of individuals by, by something, perhaps their fixtures, their form or something similar that will actually finish in the top five midfielders mm. in the next four upcoming fixtures. So let me take a quick look at the fixtures. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, Son and Mane are, would be my picks. Um, mm. I, I do really want to consider moving Mane, Salah on to Mane. Um, mm. I'll be, you know, taking a close look at their game this week. And Son is a must-have for me just because I ride and die with Son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, of and, course. Um, the ones I would love to bring in are Grealish, first of all, because mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to have Watkins. If I had Watkins, I wouldn't want Grealish. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think I would want to double up, but I just, I, I just, first of all, I love Grealish. Like, he's just so fun to watch, mm -hmm. you know? He's like, very creative. Mm -hmm. He's taking very a creative. lot of shots. Yeah. He is yeah. attempting yeah. a lot of assists. I mean, he's yeah. even ranked second or third from all Premier League players for attempted assists. Yep. So he yeah. does seem pretty good this season. Yeah. Uh, so I like the Grealish shout. And then my final shout, I think, would be... Uh, obviously, the Man United players, Bruno. I, I don't like Rashford because mm. I think Rashford is a great player. You know, world-class potential. Maybe he's already world-class. But uh, the issue with Rashford is he's so hot and cold in terms yeah. of having him as an FPL asset. So I'm not sure if he would be a safe pick, right, mm. uh, for his price. Um, so that's a tough one. <coughs> and then um, the one I would, I think the one key differential could be Zaha, just because Crystal Palace, who do they have? Mm. Newcastle, yeah, yeah, Leeds, yeah. Burnley, um, Brighton. You know, there's so, such good fixtures. Mm. Uh, he's on penalties? Is he on penalties? I, I believe he's on penalties as okay. well, Zaha, yeah. Okay. I believe so, yeah, he's got that too. to mm -hmm. be excellent target to own now, as you said, for the next couple of fixtures because their attacking upcoming fixtures do not look that tough. And yep. um, I do believe that Zaha is excellent player to own when he is playing terrible defense. I mean, uh, when he <laughs> plays against team that do not offer yep. that great of a potential for defensive clean sheet, then uh, he does very good and he actually scores goals and gets FPL returns. Yep in so many games i believe that his form is not one of the best now in the last couple of games but mm. he has been injured crystal palace have had very tough opponents to play against yeah. and yeah. Um, zaha even scored two goals now even though crystal palace yeah. are completely out of form in the last couple of games yeah so I do believe his yeah. time is to come right now from gaming 21 plus so if you want to risk yeah. it and perhaps try to climb up your rankings then Zaha should be excellent player to own for the next couple of games yep 100% agreed yeah. um, true and um, the next player that I believe will do excellent as a midfielder in the next couple of games is Bruno Fernandes I mean no great doubt. fixtures mm -hmm. great player great consistency throughout the whole season perhaps mm -hmm. in the last couple of games he did manage to blank few times but I've seen that Manchester United likes to create more chances. They like to push even more higher right now. They create uh, Fernand. I mean, uh, Martial and uh, Rashford are up there as well all the time. They like to create as well. So I do believe that Rashford will actually be able to continue to deliver attacking FPL return from game week 21 onwards as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. As for the attackers, are there any particular strikers that you believe that will do good now in the next four upcoming games? Ooh, uh, I mean, Antonio is my my first pick. Um, mm. Just regardless of the fixtures, his form is so in incredible right now. Um, you would so take Antonio, Antonio would, be mine. would you take uh, Antonio over um, Calvert Lewin as well right now? Well. Uh, yeah, actually, I would because uh, Everton, hmm. um, as we just saw in, in this first um, game of this game week, um, 
looked really bad against Newcastle. And, you know, um, over the last four game weeks, Everton have only created two big chances, mm. which is shocking, right? And really is they've cool. had even fewer shots in the box than Newcastle. There's a there's something going on with uh, Everton, right? Mm. And maybe Ancelotti is Ancelotti is kind of you know switching up his tactics. I'm not really sure, but um, the reason I brought DCL in is because when Everton have started with Dinge, James, DCL, and Richarlison, they've scored 17 goals in six games this season, which is very mm. encouraging, right? Um, so. I think uh, this is the reason I brought Everton in. And even though DCL has just blanked, I'm not too worried because I brought him in for the long run, right? Mm -hmm. So hopefully he hauls one of these games. Um, looks like they're playing, uh, they're playing Leeds next, which is gonna be a great fixture for them. Man United, you never know, Fulham, Liverpool. So we'll see. Yeah, I, li I like the DCL pick, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would you say now about Liverpool's mm. defense? Mm. <laughs> um, like uh, there is Robertson, he's very creative, but they cannot yeah. keep it clean. I mean, yeah, every time some team plays against Liverpool, there there is always marked as red fixture. But yeah. their defense does not seem to be that tough in comparison to Manchester City, let's say. So do you believe yes. that? Uh, Liverpool's defense is going to continue to be this bad, I gotta say. I'm sorry, Liverpool fans. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's a good time to jump off the Liverpool defense. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I'm saying that because I do have a wild, wild card I'm planning on using soon. Mm -hmm. And for for Robert Robbo's price, I think it's what, 7.2, 7.4, I don't even know. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for his price, it's just not good value right i think the value could be spent on the midfield so i you know obviously one of the moves i'm thinking of is um if you look at my team i want to move robo to chillwell take a punt on chillwell mm -hmm. and upgrade rafinha who's been in excellent form to Grealish. um so yeah that's good too um so i think you're right. I am not very confident about them cl keeping clean sheets. And then also Robertson has been a huge disappointment for me for the past few mm. game weeks. So I'll probably, you know, move him on and then get punished for it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Let's hope that ends up well. Mm. Um, when we now take a look at the fixtures, perhaps for game week 22, and um, we try to analyze okay. some of them. Um, what fixtures would you say are to target now in Game Week 22 or especially what teams are to target for Game Week 22? Yeah, so I, I think um, the Southampton Man United game is interesting. Uh, I like Bruno as a captain here. I'm probably going to go with Bruno. Mm. Um, True. You know, I could see two, three United goals, maybe even more. Um, and Southampton, if you remember, like they had this stretch about a month or two ago where mm -hmm. um, they were they were just so good. Um, they actually as were, a team, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, they were, they were just really good. And then um, they just kind of fell off, and they're slumping right now. Mm -hmm. I think it mainly happened because of Ings injury. I believe that okay. they've okay. been they yeah. they were very informed, and Ings injury yeah. acquired them. Adams could not step up and be as good. Then he's in yeah. he got injured as well, so they yeah. couldn't keep up with the pace of the other teams. I yeah. believe this yeah. is the main reason they did not score so many goals. Yeah, yeah, and and you know in the last seven game weeks, their their attacking numbers have been awful as well. Mm. So their defense is not that great either. So I think this is a good opportunity for Bruno. Um, so I like that fixture. I believe um, that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when, when we now take a look at uh, Newcastle against Crystal Palace, okay, I do yeah. believe that there are two players that are worth to mention in this particular game week. It could be Wilson, because they play against yeah. Crystal Palace weak defense they've had for the last couple of games. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
Then I would target Zaha as well, playing against Newcastle. I mean, Zaha is not that bad, even if though Crystal Palace have had terrible form. Yeah. So I do believe that those two people at the top, which one of them do you believe will do better now? Wilson or I Zaha? Go, I would go for Zaha. I think I would go uh, for Zaha. Same here. But but it's a close call. Like you could mm. go either way. Um, it's not something I would attack. It's not a picture I'm very interested in. Um, mm, no. So since you have Wilson, I would keep Wilson. Mm, yeah. I do believe that I will keep it. him yeah. as well. I was mainly yeah. targeting this fixture. And then yeah. I believe that in game week 23, it's Leeds against Crystal Palace. So I'm going to keep Bamford yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to keep Bamford. I think Bamford might come good, mm -hmm. um, even though he's in a slump. Uh, although, really good, yeah. to argue against Bamford, his XG, especially inside the box, has been really, you know, dropping a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But I think we just, uh, you know, he's like... He's just so fun to watch, right? Like, mm. so I, I just like Bamford as a player as well. He's a good player, yeah. I mean, perhaps his form have been a bit down mm -hmm. lately because of the whole Leeds team has been down, as you mentioned before. They're they are looking yeah. a bit tired lately, so yeah, yeah. Perhaps if they manage now to turn our, turn their form around, Bamford is going to be the key factor to victory in the next couple of games. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he seemed very good to own as well. As yeah. for the next fixture, is Burnley mm -hmm. against Manchester City. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have I, think three, mm -hmm. I, I have three particular players in mind that I would like to play from the Manchester City team, and that would be Cancelo because he was rested now for game week twenty one. Um, mm -hmm. Sterling and uh, Gundogan. Those three mm -hmm. I would like to have, especially now against Burnley, because when mm -hmm. Manchester City play defensive team, they need uh, they know how to push a bit higher and they score a lot of goals. I mean, uh, oh. I, I believe that last time they played Burnley, they even won with five to one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, so yeah. they perhaps defend really good against attacking-minded teams, but when they play against defensive teams, they kind of destroy them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have to disagree with you because I actually think it might be a 1-0, 2-0 type of game. Um, but they it did score be. five last time. So it's interesting you mentioned that. It's kind of making me think about this fixture again. Um, mm. Because maybe you're right. Maybe they score a ton of goals, right? So, so it's all something, possible. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Burnley do have a, really uh, good defense to be that low on the table i mean uh, they're one of the yeah. best defenses compared yeah. to all premier league teams this season by goals Cooper, allowed right? perhaps top five mm. so yeah that seemed like a tough fixture then uh full yep. against leicester are there any particular players <laughs> that would like to target in this fixture uh, i mean obviously a leicester asset would be good here but you know the whole Madison versus Barnes. I think that was a big topic for a while, right? Mm -hmm. um, True. Between those two, I would go for Barnes because Madison has scored more in the past few game weeks, but his XG compared to Barnes is not great. Mm -hmm. um, so if anything, Barnes would interest me, but I don't want to bring him for long term. The fixture is not that great. Um, and I would love to have Vardy in this game and captain him straight mm -hmm. away, but... Uh, I don't see myself bringing in Vardy anytime soon. No. I mean, he, he was injured. Is he coming back anytime soon now? I'm not sure. I was going to ask you, but... I, mm, think, I, don't, uh, I don't think he's yeah. in the he's next game, back, week, huh? I yeah. think. So I, I'm not sure what yeah. is going to happen with him. But yeah, that yeah. seemed pretty much awkward. When we take mm. a look at Aston Villa against West Ham, now as mm -hmm. we mentioned before so many times that... Uh, mm. Grealish has been very in form and West Ham defense seem to be dropping down a bit. So I do believe that mm -hmm. Grealish should potentially mm. be really good to own for game with 22. Watkins as well, yeah. Watkins as well, yeah. What do you think yeah. about yeah. El Ghazi? I mean, he had form increasement for last for a couple of games, then he stopped. He's done, huh? Yeah. Um, I think he's a great player, um, but. Mm. First of all, I think this game is going to be amazing, right? Because 
Aston Villa and West Ham both are so in form right now. Mm -hmm. I, I love watching both teams play. And uh, I think Aston Villa will win this game because they look like a little bit better team. Um, but Please. Grealish, perfect shout. Um, <coughs> Paul gave the great shout. I think the problem with El Ghazi is the return of Barkley, right? Mm, um, true. So I would not go for El Ghazi when you can just get um, Watkins or Grealish, right? Um, true, I would true, stick true. to those two, but I think, you know, Aston Villa has many, many options. You could go for Barkley, you could go for one of their defenders. You know, I have Konza myself, um, mm. Martinez. They're, they're just a great team to watch. This yeah, season. I actually have um, triple up on Aston Villa for this game with Martinez, Target and the Grealish. I mean, for I game of 21. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, now, as for the next game, I believe that Liverpool against Brighton should be an interesting game as well. Yeah. There could be potential few targets in this game yeah. that are good to own, perhaps Salah or Mane. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what do you think about Firmino? I mean, we. We've not spoken about him at all. His form has yeah. been up and down yeah. this season. He has not been very creative, he has not been yeah. very involved. But now in the last couple of games, his involvement gets a bit bigger. So what, yeah. what, what do you think on Firmino? Is he something that you would look to bring in or definitely not bring in? Uh, personally, I love Firmino as a player. I think he's, he also seems like such a nice guy, right? But mm -hmm. I would stay away from Firmino for sure. Um, I think that she's not that great. And, um, for that price point, there's just so many better options. And True. for that price point, I would heavily focus on the mid. If anything, I would pick Lacazette over Firmino any day. Um, <laughs> like, even Lacazette. has been really good. Yeah, mm. and um, I think Arsenal's fixtures might not be too bad. Let's see. Arsenal's fixtures seem um, very bad, I think. Oh, it's actually very bad, I see. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> they have Wolves, Aston Villa, Leeds, and Man City. Okay, not that tough. Uh, mixed bag, you know. Yeah, um, it was a mixed bag, I guess. But um, it seems like a lot of their attack is going through Lacazette, so I, I, I like the Lacazette shout. Mm, he does seem very good to own, yeah. Mm. He does seem very good to own, and he offers some attacking mm. FPL return potential, but I believe that we need to wait and see on this Arsenal thing and how yeah. it all develops. I mean, they've been really in form right now, so we don't yeah. know if Lacazette is getting those points yeah. returns just because of the whole team form or is just him that is playing good. Yeah, yeah. Um, as for the last fixture that I believe is worthy to mention in game with 22 is Tottenham against Chelsea. I mean, this is going to be one of the most interesting mm. fixtures for game with 22. Yeah. It might yeah. be a blank games where it could potentially end up 0-0 so we do not yeah. get anything exciting to watch that game with, but there is still great potential for both teams to score in this game week because Chelsea have been transforming right now. Tottenham will try to get advantage of it, I believe, and try to score goal. Even though now Kane is absent, I do believe that Tottenham will not just try to give up and settle yeah. for a draw in this one. Yeah. What are um, your thoughts on this? I think it's one of those impossible to call games. Um, I probably would not captain any of, any of them. Um, mm. We just don't have enough information about Chelsea with their new manager, so True. it's one to watch, but it's going to be a fun game. I think there's a chance it's just another 1-1, one -one, right? Mm. Classic Jose. So, <laughs> true, true. Um, so we'll see, yeah. Yeah, that seemed like a good fixture. I mean, we will wait and see what is going to happen now in game week 22. And, yeah, um, but then again, I would like to mention Son is very, very good against Chelsea, so he could uh, he could score a couple. True. This is just a crazy true, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> If now Chelsea's defense is not as good as it was against Wolves, and they play again like they did play 
before that game, I do believe that Tottenham have excellent attacking FPL return yeah. potential for that yeah. game week as well. Um, as for the Tottenham team, I, am, and I believe uh -huh. that Son is becoming one of the most popular and attra attractive targets to own for game in FPL. But yeah, except yeah. for Son and perhaps Dyer mm. as a defender, do you have any other targets that we could potentially target from that Tottenham team now when Kane is gone? Perhaps Bale or... I don't think so. Some... I, I honestly don't think so. Mm. I think uh, your point, you know, 80% of the goals and assists come from, attacking returns come from Kane and Son. True. Um, you know, a lot of people pick Dyer uh, just because of his clean sheet potential. But, you know, if you look at Tottenham's fixtures, who do they have? They have uh, mm. Chelsea, West Brom, Man City, West Ham. Realistically, they might get one clean sheet. Mm. So even then, Dyer is not a great pick for me when you can get a lot more for that same price point. Um, True. So True. Mm -hmm. they don't seem Maybe, to offer. Uh -huh. They don't seem to offer us uh, as great clean sheet potential as they did at the beginning of the season. So yeah, they, yeah. Mm -hmm. the defenders' points yeah. return is not as high as other teams. Yeah. yeah, I agree. True. Now, as for the captaincy options for game week 22 to game week 25. Okay, yeah. Like when we take a look those fixtures upcoming from game week 20 to the game week 25 we will try to explain and uh, uh -huh. analyze the captaincy options perhaps yeah we will try to find good potential targets for captains mm -hmm. in those game weeks so in game week 22 who would you like to recommend as a captain um so and so honestly, I've only really thought about 22, um, mostly. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At this point, I think Bruno is a great option. Um, I'm not sure who I would pick for City. Um, so I would hold off on City, personally. Mm. And then, you know, you just really have to like that Liverpool-Brighton option. But True. So Salah is probably going to be the most popular captain. Salah or Bruno this week, or this mm -hmm. coming week. Um, but, you know, as I said before, Mane would be a great shout as well. True. Yeah. How about yourself? What do you think? I totally agree with you. I believe that Fernandez seemed like uh -huh. the most safe pick now for game week 22 and uh, yeah. Son should be second. Then yeah. um, there is Everton against Leeds game, which oh, forget about that. Somebody yeah. could potentially True. captain DCL, but his yeah, form yeah. have not been the greatest in the last couple of games. I mean, now in the Newcastle game, as we said, they did not show anything yeah. particular yeah. in return. So I yeah. do not believe that he is a great captaincy option. But if you want to risk it and try something else, then perhaps DCL could be good. I like that. You know, I was actually going to say the I prefer the Leeds fixture over the Newcastle fixture. Mm. So even though this Newcastle game went horribly wrong, I think uh, DCL could be a great shout. Yeah. He's a great player. I mean, he's a great star striker. He's having very good season as well. Yep. Yep. Um, as for game week 22, Point I three. 23, yeah, sorry. <laughs> nice. Uh, as for gaming 23, now I do believe there are few potential targets for captaincy as well. Okay. I will uh, begin by saying that I believe that Son is the best yeah. captaincy option now for game week 23 because they do play against West Brom. West yeah. Brom have been the team that has allowed most goals out of all Premier League teams this season. Yeah, and um, Son is really good player. I mean, he's been one of the best players in the Premier League this season. Yeah, perhaps now Kane's absence could potentially bring his form down. But as we said before, we both think that he is going to continue to deliver. So this is the main reason I believe he is very strong, strong candidate for captaincy in game week twenty three against West mm. Brom. Mm. Are there any players in particular that you would target to captain in game week 23? I took a brief look. I'm 100% going with Son. Yeah. 
Mm, that's yeah. more definite. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't no, think no, they're no. better targets as well. I mean, um, there are not yeah. so many great play yeah. uh, teams playing uh, low yeah. table teams. So well, yeah, I mean, although a Leeds asset could be interesting, we'll see how their if their form goes up. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. even then, how can you not pick Sun against West Brom? Right? True. So I think True. no brainer. Yeah, West Brom is really a team to target when it comes to captaincy mm -hmm. options. For sure. Yeah. They've had terrible defense in the last couple of games as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And um, as for game week 24, yeah. I would believe I will target a team that plays West Brom again. Oh. <laughs> uh, no and it's going to be Manchester United. Manchester yep. United's Fernandes for this one as well. I have the same exact pick. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so, as as we said, like Fernandez, do have potential for captaining in two out of three of these game weeks. So, I do believe that Fernandez is essential to own for the yeah. next couple of game weeks. Yeah. As for game week twenty five now, there. Uh, twenty four. Are... I would like to mention some differential captains. Sure. Um, I like. I really would like to captain Antonio. You know, I think uh, if he continues this form, <laughs> um, he could be a good pick against Sheffield. Mm, it kind of um, looks tempting, doesn't it? He's very tempting. <coughs> <coughs> well, it's pretty mm -hmm. long time until then. Why not? If things go for him as they've yeah, done yeah. now in the last couple of games, and if form can and his form continues, and West Ham still yeah. continue to deliver attacking FPL return, then I do believe that. Antonio could potentially be a really good differential tone for game week 24 as yeah, a captain. Yeah. Really nice targets to own. Now, as for the 25th game, 25th mm -hmm. game week, I do believe that Fernandez mm -hmm. is excellent to own as a captain <laughs> as well. This is going to be my yeah. third Fernandez pick yeah. uh, in uh, four game weeks. And I do believe that he will do excellent against Newcastle because Newcastle yeah. have been a bit out of form, even though they've showed some improvement now in this week's yeah. game against Everton. But I do believe that their defense is still weak and I think that Manchester United will be able to exploit that and Fernandes will be able to return a lot of FPL return in a form of FPL assists or in a form of a goal. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I'm the same. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it for today. For everybody mm -hmm. that's been watching this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on any new content. Thanks a lot, FPL Sonaldo, for today's video. My You've pleasure. been great. I would like to have you over at the studio sometime soon again, if that's yeah. something that you would wish as well. Absolutely. So, um, thank you. And... Thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you next time.